doing YouTube? So we're finally in kind of full-on production mode. I say kind of because when we actually go into real full-on production mode, we're going to build fixtures that will allow our machines to run, or the Matsura at least, will allow the Matsura to run for an hour at a time. Right now we put in two parts, we take two parts off, and that takes about 15 minutes cycle time. Still going to try and get our cycle time down, and um, we definitely will get it down per part after we... Uh, we go into full-on production mode. What do you guys think of the surface finish on this? I really am not liking this radius at the bottom. So this this one is is actually a departure from our last design. So we got the threads all ironed out for the media, the light duty water bottle, and then we machined a groove and we put an O-ring in because we were having problems getting a perfect seal. They sealed up pretty well. In fact, I would say 80% of the bottles sealed perfectly every time without one of these seals, but it's just that 20%. So, yeah, we've added the rubber gasket to the bottom, which helps out quite a bit with sealing. I built this fixture so we can cut our carving holes. It works pretty well. I also built this handy dandy tool holder, which I love. I don't know why I waited so long to build this because my tool holders were just kind of bouncing around my workbench. And um, I don't know why I always fight organizing so much. And then in the end, I just, I asked myself why I waited so long to do it. We're getting organized, and we're getting streamlined. The lathe is running very, very well right now. Isaac put a lot of time into building the tool path to cut the threads, and this lathe runs perfectly every time, all day, every day. Something else cool that Isaac built for the lathe is this this guide for the bar to roll on. So we're using a bar feeder. You simply program the lathe to run 10 parts and it runs 10 parts, but we have to start with a pretty long bar. So Isaac bought some roller blade bearings and uh, I built this setup so that we can run a full bar out the end of the machine through the hole in the side of our building and out here willy-nilly and I know it's kind of jank but it works really really well We're slowly making progress. All of the caps for the light duty water bottle are finished. We planted an initial run of 50 just so that we could use for marketing, testing purposes. So those are all finished. That's part of them here. Uh, and the rest are in this tumbler right here. These were initially tum tumbled with plastic media and then we're following it up with walnut. Um, it's doing a really good job. I'm actually quite impressed. It takes a while. I think we tumbled these first with plastic media for 12 hours, and uh, I think we're planning another 12 hours with the walnut. It's not a big deal because it's something that we can leave on all night. We have started our initial run of 50 of the heavy, heavier duty water bottle caps. These caps fit the majority of small plastic beverage containers. Your, your standard 2 liter Coke bottle and everything that you can imagine the cap from a 2 liter Coke bottle fitting onto, which is, it, it's actually quite a lot. Um, so these are going to be extremely versatile. We imagine these selling more than the light duty caps. We decided to make these caps um, 
a priority because my little brother is a combat rescue officer in the Air Force and he's stationed in Turkey right now. And the military gives all of their guys um, water in bottles similar to this. It's actually Nestle brand, but the bottle is, I'm sure it comes off the same dye or the same mold. And the threads are very similar. It's a three thread, it's a three lead thread and it's very shallow. It was tough to, to iron out the tool path for it, but now that we've got it, we've got it. I mean, it's perfect every time. Plus with a gasket in there, it seals up pretty well. Another thing I've done that I want to tell you about is add this valve in line to my coolant system upgrade. So I bought this pump from Harbor Freight for like $130 and I built this, um, this extension to my tank. And this pump will do so much more than I need. And for a while I was just running it wide open and I was getting way too much coolant, way too much pressure. The pressure would blast the coolant off the workpiece, up onto the shower curtains, and I couldn't, I couldn't really see the machine. It was just a sheen of green, and it would get chips up inside my tool changer, and it would, the chips would fall onto the taper of the tools, and, and the tools would be misaligned when they got sucked up into the spindle. So I put that valve in line, and I have a much more manageable coolant flow. It doesn't move all the chips down to the bottom of the machine here, but what it does allow me to do is um, I only have to clean the machine. I only have to remove chips like once an hour because the chips are kind of equally spread out like through the whole trough here and up into the machine. And they don't collect right on this grate which goes into the coolant tank. They don't clog up the coolant system. So that was really good. I'm glad I did that. Another project that I want to tell you about before I let you go is this. Now this is, or will soon be, a pole stud. The internet tells you that you cannot build your own pole studs, but we disagree. This is a stick of chrome ollie that I picked up on eBay for like 40 bucks shipped. Um, and we're turning these pole studs that if you buy them from reputable manufacturers, they cost 20 bucks a pop, which isn't a whole lot, but when you need 20 of them and um, you'd rather spend the money on other, other tools, I think it's, uh, I would just, in the end, I'd rather make them myself. Um, God, my iPhone camera just sucks up close. So we're making these, and they should be pretty good. We are going to heat treat them. Um, I'm not real sure yet where we're going to source the heat treating from. We might do it ourselves. We have a habit of doing things ourselves that we should probably leave to other people, but you know what? It works for us. This is a sample of the pull stud. Where's that pull stud you got? This is a pull stud, and what it does, for those of you who don't know what a pull stud does, is it, it grips onto the bottom of your tool holder, and this is what your machine grabs a hold of when it pulls the tool up inside the spindle. And this is actually the wrong pull stud. It came with this tool holder that I bought, used. And I have a bunch of these that are wrong, and I have only a few of them that are right, so Whenever I set my machine up for, to run a program, I have to pull off pull studs and mold, move them around tool holders. That one's wrong, that one's wrong. Pretty much all these are wrong, they're on here. So, we're gonna make 20 of them, get them heat treated, and save ourselves 200 bucks.